can't help it. We have this incredible desire to change things. And I think it's much like a caterpillar does not recognize that it's going to become a butterfly. They're not, a, we, at least we don't think they are. They're not aware of it. They just do what they have to do. They make their cocoon and then they go and they change. I agree with you. All he of this technology is a metamorphosis yes. and the elite believe that. And we cover that in my film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement. And they openly, I mean, all the top, all the top scientists, futurists, government, UN people, they say they want to exterminate 90% of us and allow that 10% to fuse with the man-machine interface and then take off to the stars. Now, whether that's real or not, that's what the elite believe, and they already have life extension technologies they don't want the public to have access to. That, it sounds ridiculous, but from where we are, it's not as big of a leap as where we're living or what we're, the, the era we're living in right now in comparison to people that we know existed, like the Indians or cavemen. Or Computers would be magic to them. Yeah, man. I mean, just the ability to, to download something off the Internet on your iPhone. I mean, that is one of the craziest things that's ever existed. The Google search. The ability to take your phone, Google something, find out information on a topic instantaneously. They didn't even have that on Star Trek. I mean, that is such a gigantic, monumental leap of access to information. And when Magellan, 600 years ago, or 400 years ago, circumnavigated the entire world, they didn't even know what was out there. Right, yeah, they just took chances. He didn't make it back. Almost everyone died when the ship came back to Portugal. It was rotting and falling apart, and only yeah, a few guys were alive. Nuts. But imagine, they had no idea. And he said, I think it's round, and I'm going around it. Yeah, they were have, there was rats on board with them. They were all getting scurvy because nobody had vitamin C. I mean, th those, those early traveler dudes were nuts. Well, the really nutty idea is the idea of guys like Graham Hancock, guys who believe that those early traveler dudes were just this generation's version of that, and that there's been many, many thousands of years of civilization that we don't even know about because there was a, a lot, lot of evidence out. does show that it gets yeah. built up and then destroyed. I mean, it, look, we know that there's hundreds of thousands of near-Earth objects between Mars and Jupiter that could just crush this Earth. You know, we know it's happened. Look many, at many Saturn comments. and Shoemaker-Levy comets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at all. Yeah, look at that. And also look at what we know has happened on this planet that comes from this planet, like, like Yellowstone. Like, they've just figured out, like, within the last decade that Yellowstone is this gigantic caldera volcano that's 600 kilometers across. And every time, it it's like a continent killer. It blows every six to 800,000 years, and it kills everything on the continent. And it happened 600,000 years ago. Like and the really scientist, I've had top volcanologists on, the government admits that's true, and the public has a built-in denial switch right. where I get emails saying, you're a liar, Yellowstone is not a caldera. Well, it's like a gigantic game of musical chairs. It's like we hope that we are not going to be here when the music stops you know that's what we hope that the while our life is here and while our family's life is here and our grandchildren everything's going to be okay i think that life on earth is very much like an anthill in a field you know the ants in that anthill they have known nothing other than that anthill they've only been alive for a couple of weeks as long as they've been alive that anthill's been there and that anthill sustains them all and they they think this is just how it always is and then some little kid walks by sees that anthill and stomps on it one day just out of the blue and everything changes forever and the ant hit, the ants never saw it coming they never knew it was going to happen they would never would have if they had consciousness they never would have imagined it well there's so many things that can happen to stomp our ant hill there's meteors there's earthquakes there's caldera volcanoes the the gigantic super volcano that is yellowstone park I mean, did you know germany has a super caldera did it? Yeah, yeah. they're all over the planet i'm sure i mean it makes sense i mean if you look at mountains i mean where did those mountains come from they they came from activity you know they raise up and it just takes a long ass time and we're only here on this planet for a blip and by the way until the 90s uh, when saturn got hit by that comet that broke in all those pieces yeah. Scientists argued and said, no, only every billion years do we get hit by a big object. Now, because of the satellites and everything, they know we get hit every couple hundred years by gigantic objects. Yeah. And instead, the government's worried about spying on the citizens and controlling us instead of dealing with all these objects. I don't know what they can do, man. I don't know what they can do. I think the, the, the idea of monitoring the entire 360 degrees of Earth's sky is virtually impossible. If they turned the satellites around and started trying, they could. You think so? Yeah, I've seen the, the studies on it. Well, then what do you do when one's coming? you got some five-mile-wide hunk of metal that's heading towards the Earth. What do you do? You put weapon systems in space, but then you don't want the, the, their treaties against that because whoever has weapon systems can turn them back towards Earth. <laughs>
Oh, it's also... Don't worry, Joe. The weapon systems are there. Oh, I'm sure they are. I mean, you know, I've read all that stuff about the Star Wars scientists, how many different scientists turned out missing or dead, and some strange, you know... Bob Bowman's conspiracy. in the hospital right now. He's actually in Fall of the Republic. He was the head of Star Wars. And he won't talk about it when I talk to him in private, but he said, I'll tell you what's declassified, because NSA spokesmen and Space Command spokesmen have, have let some of it out. When he was there in the late 70s, they announced it in the 80s, it was around the 70s, they had uh, an entire fleet of unmanned uh, aircraft up there, uh, black manas, space planes, but they don't use nuclear weapons. They use meteor guns, and they drop solid DU Sabos into orbit that accelerate to 30,000 miles an hour, and they can kill people five miles under the ground. And it's a global decapitation weapon where they could wipe out the whole leadership of the world in a matter of minutes. Wow. And that's all real stuff? That's ultra, sure. ultra top secret the stuff that's leaked, yeah. Meteor guns? That sounds like an episode of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, it, <clears throat> it, doesn't ex it has a it's, rocket booster right. on the back of, say, a 100-pound Sabo. Uh, What's a Sabo? That's, say, where you take a two two three round and shoot it out of a fifty caliber round so it has even more acceleration power. And it's a Sabo because it's got a rocket booster on it. So it would speed up to 18, 20,000 miles an hour. Instead, 30, 35, 40,000 miles an hour. The space planes are already going. That is like the, like the speed of meteors, right? They hit the yes. 45,000 miles. And that's why it's called a meteor gun because, wow. because when these birds are about to attack, they accelerate coming in at an angle on the atmosphere to accelerate so there's already a greater acceleration than a meteor would normally have. Then they fire with a high-powered rocket booster a solid DU round, which with its kinetic energy when it hits has the power of a medium-yield nuclear weapon. God damn. I believe it. You know, I mean, I believe that it's possible. I believe if they're, if they're willing to blow up Hiroshima and Nagasaki the way they did, why wouldn't they come up with something like that? You know. Well, believe me, the NSA will be watching this later. Joe, what do you want to you want to say hi to him? I want to say I'm a, a a true patriot. I pay my taxes. Leave me alone, please. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? You know, I mean, these the, the the real problem is that we have we are moving in a certain direction, and we've been moving in this direction for a long time in this in this society and in virtually every society that's ever existed. Every society that has incredible power eventually winds up going into corruption and falling apart. Every empire collapses. And it all, it, it's because of corruption. Exactly. But this scientific evil. dictatorship admits in their public documents that they've studied all of that and they've built a scientific dictatorship so people can't get out of it. Joe, I have hundreds. I always, you know, we, we joke about documents. But I have hundreds of documents, textbooks, government books and reports, UN documents, Pentagon documents. This was written by the White House science czar, John P. Holdren, and it was written by one of Bush's advisors, Bush Sr., Paul R. Ehrlich. This calls for putting sterilants in the water to sterilize people, the vaccines, poisoning us, world population reductions of 80%. It is real, and a lot of people can rationalize and say, yeah, there are too many people. Instead of understanding, wait, I'm under attack too. They are attacking us, and this guy recently declassified chemtrails. And it made almost no news and said, yeah, we've been spraying with barium salts and aluminum dioxide. What do you say to that? What is